something went on here, and something went on there. And <laughs> This time on TNT. We play a new Kijiji-inspired game. Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. We play another new game called Chirps. Plus, alert, alert. I went to alert. That's all coming up right now on TNT. One, one, two. Sound dues. Uh, 112. Un sound dues. Thanks for being with us this week. Merci pour être ici cette semaine. We're looking forward to having a great show for you today. Nous sommes excités d'avoir une émission magnifique aujourd'hui. We have a new game called Chirps. On a un jeu nouveau appelé Chirp. It's a game where you chirp each other and two people get into an argument. Uh, dans le jeu, uh, les deux personnes uh, chirp uh, l'un l'autre, uh, puis il y a un argument. And we have another game called Listen, I Wasn't Born Yesterday. Et on a un autre jeu appelé Lessons, I Was Not Born Yesterday. And this is about uh, basically when you're out on Kijiji's and you meet the person and the scenario that happens. Uh, C'est à propos de Kijiji, P.K. Subban était traded uh, predators. <laughs> and in the uh, scenario, you have to say, listen, I wasn't born yesterday. And that's part of the game. Il faut dire, listen, I wasn't born yesterday. So we're looking forward to a great episode, 112 of TNT. Hey, um, I was, uh, I slipped into P.K. Subban mode just because anytime I hear a French voice in a reporting style, I just assume you're going to hear P.K. Subban and something about the At train. some point, yeah. But I'm sure. so excited to talk to you. It's been a minute. It has, it has. Uh, you, you were uh, up and away, as they say. Yeah, and you have a big new exciting purchase, and we'll get to both, but yeah. first... <laughs> Props to Arkells and Timbo. Yes. If you didn't see their performance at the MMVAs, it was lint AF, as Gordon Lightfoot would say. <laughs> yes, it they was. They had the Arquettes there. They had a, a horn Horns. section. And as someone pointed out, you know, you go from a performance like that to Iggy Azalea lip syncing. And it's like, <laughs> oh, dude. The whatever salad? Yeah. It was like, it was like you had this, here's the beef. And then yeah. Iggy Azalea, Azalea was the what have great night for our boys. Yeah, it was a, a great night for our boys. I yeah. uh, I, I was downtown with our friend Gary Gugotomy, sure. Gary LeBlanc. We we call him Gugotomy just because it's fun to say. But uh, I, I met up with Tim after the show, and actually he was with his dad Max, who's a beauty and a uh, the, the, uh, one of the great family friends forever. Well, Max is how you met Tim, right? Yes, yes. Max was the one who booked the original drum lesson uh, at Soul Drums back in the day, in 98, I think it was, that Tim came in as a 15-year-old, and his dad worked at Tidalist at the time, and, like, hooked me up with golf balls, and... His uh, dad was a ballsman? Well, no, he was the uh, president of Tidalist back in the day. No for, way. For quite a while, yeah. He's a, he's a legend in the golf biz. How do you get to be the president of Titleist? Uh, you gotta gotta know a lot of people and uh, have the social skills of a, a man like Max Oxford. He's a Crazy. classic. So anyway, uh, Max they, they, Oxford's they, mo. He was there, so he was obviously at, able to experience the award show with Tim. But uh, we met up at the Horseshoe afterwards, and I saw Mr. Max Kerman, who I'm I'm actually going to be on the uh, mic on much. Pod, I think awesome next week or this week or something like that so that'll be nice. fun so anyway uh great night for the boys great to see them and uh they're actually headed to the NHL awards today in Vegas oh are they really yeah right um, now man you just realize what a command of a crowd Max has mm -hmm. and um you know obviously their playing is is really tight i mean i'm a drummer so the first thing yep. i do is watch the drummers that's and it that's it you don't that's just the way you think too well i hear the beat before i even hear like melody or yep. words or anything it's natural for you though right it's like you can just you just that's how you visualize things it's just all like the skeleton of the song it's just you're there that's how i do yeah yeah how do you process music I just get, you get on board and you ride. It's a full on, it's fun. It's like dancing. I don't even know how to dance, but I can, you know, collect myself on the train of, of time and take us around for a good trip. You know, I've met a couple masks in my day that have, and I'm going to get the name of it wrong, 
Sensosusasifsliitis, where they see music in color. Oh, yeah. No, I've heard about that for sure. Synchrosynchosepsitis, mm-hmm. I think, is the medical term for it. Yeah. Well, and I think that I visualize things in t- chunks of time through practice. You know, you start to feel sections and they have they have kind of a look when you're playing it in your head, almost like a, not quite a circle, but you feel like there's a movement that's continual that you kind of get on. So no it's, way. It's kind of visual in the way of, like, I guess if you're, you know, GPSing your way around, you feel a sense of the time structure. So you don't have to think about the, how many bars it is to, to go into the chorus or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, you feel 32 bars or 16 bars or wow. 64 bars. So like the opening of Sowing the Seeds of Love by Tears for Fears, you don't hear as ba dunk da ba dunk da ba dunk da ga da da You see that as three bars. No, I'm just, yeah, I would see that as like the dun da like the whole pattern happening and those beats that you're hearing are around that. You know what I mean? Boom. Yeah. Da, 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 I'm hearing that boom, boom, boom. Boom. So whatever happens around it is the the beat that is happening. But usually, yeah, the beat is a it's a, it's interesting because it, it you can either work with the vocal in the song and make it all sit nice, or you could work against it, or you can be busy, or you know, there's a, it's it's very uh, intellectual thing. Uh, all instruments, but when it comes to rhythm. It's like you can be, you can sound stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. With your selection of how you're driving through the song. So. Well, I guess in in the macro sense, it would be the difference between when people are learning to play the guitar, and you can see them set down uh, each individual finger as they kind of remember what fingers go where in a chord. Yeah. Versus people that have been playing for a while who just set their hand down in a shape that plays that chord, right? Yeah. Like when, yeah, like if you're sitting and strumming guitar, a guitar versus if I were playing chords on a guitar, like it's natural for you, but I have to think about, I have to think about it a lot. I have to think about that. I have to think about it's, it. It's um, field trip time of year, and we've both been on field trips with our precious little cargo in the last week. Yeah. First, where did you guys go? Well, mine was about a couple of weeks ago, but I went with the my son's uh, class, Mr. Cirillo's class, to the ROM, and it was a great time. And I had Jack, my boy Jack, and four other boys and a couple girls that were actually sweet as pie the whole time. But these four boys, including my son, were just like running around and they were like the kind of the, I guess the, the agitators of the, of the, uh, of the class, not agitators, but just the most energy <laughs> in my son. Like knocking over dinosaur. Well, yeah, it's not like they're recreations and not, stuff. not disrespectful or, 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 or mean or anything, just like so much energy that they, they're busting out like puppies and they have to run around at, at all times. So yeah. it was a little bit, after, you know, three or three hours of it, it just gets a little bit, oh my gosh, we got to settle down, boys, here. So did, started, you have to, did you have to bring the thunder? I started to get to the point where it was almost like Chris Farley when he's a bus driver, <laughs> when his face turns all mm-hmm. red. Is that in, uh, isn't it in uh, the Adam Sandler movie when he goes to school as a kid? I don't even remember. <laughs> What's that one called? Billy Madison. I haven't seen it anyway, in so long. It's a great uh, portrayal of a guy losing his mind. When the, the drum. Well, very few did it as good as Farley. <laughs> yes. So just... did you have to wrap any knuckles verbally? No. Well, I just had to say stop it a lot. Like, stop, stop, or come back. <laughs> and a couple times they were like running through like the person trying to show uh, you know another like they're talking about an exhibit and then they're running through and the person talking just loses it it's like you right. have to stop running in here right like the librarian styles so, i mean fair enough yeah it was uh it was fun though it was great but it, the, the funniest part is the, the chaos on the bus ride back and forth with the kids on the bus. It's People so, standing, throwing sandwiches around so, and stuff. It's so loud and it's like crazy. <laughs> it's like it's like the loudness of recess, but everyone's in the bus that's confined. 
right? How long was the bus ride? It's downtown, so it was like 45 minutes. Whoa. <laughs> it was fine. It just uh, it took me right back to being a kid on the bus and like... You're bored and and you're just talking and excited. And you're you got the day off basically because you're not in class, so everybody's just amped. It's that time of year though, right now. Everybody, it's almost the end of summer. Remember how fired up you'd get? Big time. I remember the first couple of times the windows were down and maybe someone was mowing the grass and the smell of uh, freshly mown grass drifted in the window. Yeah, or like. One of the kids does a pressed ham on the window against the people driving by in traffic. What is that? The bare ass against the window, the pressed no. ham. <laughs> you don't remember that? Did any of the kids on your trip do it? No, but there's always... I didn't see any of them. No, there was none of that. That's like 80s styles. But remember the kids that like will give the guy... That didn't happen, but when I was a kid, like the one idiot that gives everybody the finger until the one guy's raging. Yeah. Right? With, you know, getting angry because the kid's giving him the bird on the highway. One, yeah, he's trying to cut off the bus so <laughs> yes. he can board the bus. Just hey, look. you, the guy with the red hair and the freckles, come here. <laughs> yeah, give me that fucking kid in the back. <laughs> give me that fucking kid. It's like, what are you going to do? He's just a kid busting people's balls. I loved, um, <laughs> I went with uh, Shug's class to uh, McKellaman's Pond. And uh, Carol was there too, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. And there were just lots of breakout groups, like kids finding leeches or catching little minnows or playing soccer, baseball, or climbing trees. Um, And one of the funniest moments, not to tell tales out of school, but a kid was pretty decent chunk up a tree. And I said to the (laughs) teachers, like, hey, just... Getting out of of hand, like passing the threshold? Well, it's pretty high. (laughs) Like, it it was at the... If he fell, it's probably like broken femur style. Oh, yeah. Like that high. Yeah. So I said um, to two teachers, um, just wondering what the like, what the okay acceptable height is on tree climbing, and they both <laughs> said without missing a beat, "Who is it?" <laughs> yeah. And I love that that was the default because it's true. There isn't. You do kind of make different rules for different kids. If someone's agile and can probably handle themselves in a tree, you probably wouldn't worry about it as much. But if it's <clears throat> a clumsier kid, or I don't know, maybe oh it's, really? It's, I thought it's a kid I thought you don't it was like. like... If it's that kid that's always causing the issue, then we got to figure this out right now. Well, this is the thing. There are kids that always cause issues. There are, I mean, like yeah. any group of people, some are quiet, some are nice, some are funny, some are not. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was really cool. And mostly what I liked about it was spending time with um, these kids that you hear so much about by name. Mm-hmm. Like so-and-so got in trouble or so-and-so got another award or so-and-so... Uh, as a dancer, so and so is quite a hockey player. Like to kind of put together a visual reference for the usual suspects that come up over and over again. I kind of like that. Yep. And then with Indy's class, we went to uh, a campground, mm-hmm. and there was like um, you know wagon rides and uh, playground stuff and a petting zoo, like that kind of thing. Nice, it's big fun. So just the old classic field trip styles. Classic field trip. Doesn't it sometimes blow your mind that we live in a world where you can't take a peanut butter sandwich to school? No, I know. People don't uh, mess with the peanuts. People don't mess with the peanuts, but like, what percentage of kids in your class took peanut butter sandwiches every single day? Every day. day. Everybody had peanuts of some sort. How about the, the I didn't know you could, this is completely aside, but like, I was thinking how like in public, if people are starting to freak out now, like peanuts in like, like the Sky Dome, for example, or whatever, like. Because some people, the smell of it can trigger something. Wow. So, uh, but I didn't realize, I saw a picture of some bod sent in a, a, some, a guy with a shrimp ring sitting up in the, in the, in the, the I saw that the too. nose bleeds at the dome. What a bod he's crushing a shrimp a, ring. He's crushing a, a shrimp ring. And I'm like, they don't sell shrimp rings. And he's like, and then a flood of people, you can bring any food that you want. I didn't know you could bring a ton of food to the Sky Dome to... Well, I didn't know that either. Yeah, you can bring in food. Like, obviously, but shrimp ring. You like you bring in a shrimp ring. How the hell do you... Like, what do you Maureen, have? Big... can we stop at Costco? I need to grab a shrimp ring shrimp before ring. the Jays game tonight. Got to crush it by the fifth inning or you might... Uh, it might go south on you in the turn. All I'm saying is, I did some research into uh, foods that are most apt to give you food poisoning, and shrimp is at the top of the list. Yeah, it's got to be. It's Gary Goo got to be. I don't mess with shrimp if anymore. If shrimp smells like fish... Throw it out. Two other changes as far as food and school goes. What? 
The first is you can't trade anymore because of all the dietary restrictions and things that that people have no, like yeah. hey do you want my chips and can i have a chocolate bar you can't be doing that anymore you want my nutella sandwich can't do it. yeah or do you want my blueberries can't do it anymore and the second thing is i think this is um true of all schools now our kids have to bring home their food garbage yep yeah and the great thing about that <clears throat> is you always have an accurate sense of what your kid's been eating or hasn't been eating or what they like or what they claim to like but don't eat. Yep, there's no one, you can't throw stuff out. Yeah, which which is so smart for two reasons. One, because it minimizes the schools having to deal with all this waste. Mm -hmm. And two, gives you, uh, like I say, an accurate sense of where your kid's at at all times, which is dope. It is dope, and that's the best time of year. Everybody's about to bump out, get the They're summer on. bumping. Right? Everybody's fired up. Yeah, big time. Every day after school, it's like one more week. Oh, I know. Crazy. Except kids at our age, like I'm sure Anna's the same way, our, our girls are kind of sort of dreading the end of school because they love school that much. Yeah. It's a social thing and they love learning and um, we're going to have to find some nerd camps or something. <laughs> so so I was in alert, bud. I was in alert, alert. You went up to alert, alert. The big Nunavut alert. Yes. It is, just to give you perspective on where it is, it's closer to Stockholm than it is to Ottawa. Wow. It's 800 clicks from the North Pole, and it's the northernmost inhabited community in the world. Is that the, f the furthest north reach we got? That's it. Yeah. That's as far yeah, as you can Yeah, the tip of go. Ellesmere Island. So 55 people live there all winter, mm -hmm. and it's 24-hour darkness. And then in the summer, it's 24 hours daylight. So that's what it was when we were there. And the population swells in the summer because of this thing called Operation Nevis, where they're there maintaining and cleaning the communications equipment, which is quite a challenge, as you might expect, in the frozen north. Yeah. But a few interesting things. They have Arctic hares up there, bunnies that come up to about your knees or a little above. And because there's no vegetation really to speak of, they're carnivores. Whoa. So the Arctic hares eat Arctic foxes. Wow. Because the foxes are smaller. So we saw a bunch of them masks. Jeez. Um, and the other thing is there's obviously are polar they, bears well, around like, and there are muskox around and things like that. Imagine in the 24-hour darkness, there's a polar bear out there somewhere. Yeah. But you're not really sure where. And polar bears can smell you a long, long, long time before you can see or smell them. Yeah. And they hunt you, right? That that's yeah. they will actually hide and try and like wait to get you proper. Well, they can cover they cover their nose with yeah. their paws mm -hmm. so that you can't see them in the snow because their eyes are little slits and their noses are the only things that are black. So that's pretty sophisticated. Yeah. But the best part was, I mean, first of all, what a super bunch of buds up there. And um obviously the sacrifices of being that far away from your family uh are already incredible but there was this just a real spirit of canadianity and bodism up there and um people are encouraged to put up signs and the distance to their hometown mm -hmm. so it was quite moving to see you know tignish pei and um tiny tiny towns all across the country that people had been up there from to serve um food was great the mess hall you get two drinks a night that's it um but honestly i've, I've never felt more welcome i don't think anywhere than i was there and we got there on tuesday night does, uh, does everybody was, you meet have like an iq of 140 plus <laughs> yeah they're i mean very very smart yeah. and specialized people mm -hmm. um we got to fly in a, a griffin helicopter you know the tactical helicopter thing yeah and they were um they were a bunch of french dudes from val cartier and they were not messing around like so switched on but the neat thing was from uh, the commanding officer to the general duty people to the cooks to the helicopter pilots, didn't matter what the job was, didn't matter how long they'd been up there. Everyone had a ferocious amount of pride, both for the country and for their roles. And, you know, I was shooting a comedy piece, so you ask people like, you know, as a general duty person, is there something you've ever been asked that you're like, I'm not doing that? And without irony or hesitation, they're all like, nope. Yeah everybody no. doesn't matter everybody's all in and you can imagine when they have like a pipe burst or something it doesn't matter your rank or military or civilian everyone just hops in and That's, fixes it those are so, full, those are bod rules 
Bod rules. Get in and help. Doesn't matter how many stripes you have on your shoulder. So uh, Tuesday night's the ball hockey night from 8 to 9. Nice. So I strapped on the pads no and went way. in net, and they lit me up pretty good. <laughs> Did you, did you have, were you all like tired? Because you don't, oh, huh? I, I don't know what, what happened to me. I was like trying to stack the pads and go all gump worsely on the masks. Yeah. And they were just like waiting me out till I'd inevitably go down. And then just popping it over me like nothing, honey. I remember just this one time my, my cousin, my cousins had like a pickup hockey team. And their goalie wasn't there, so just this dude from the crowd was like, I, fuck, I used to be a goalie back in the oh. fucking 80s. He gets in there, he's got a big barrel, and he's standing in the net. <laughs> he's got everything on, and he's just like skating out to the net and like moving around. He was like moving around a bit. And then like <laughs> two minutes into the game, he kept like... Putting his like hands inward over the pads and like like resting on the pads. <laughs> he had a jammer. <laughs> no, and he was just like so tired. He was like re- trying to stand up but rest on himself <laughs> as well. And then, uh, well, my poke check no, used to be pretty but, good, but no. I was like, I, I'm too old. I'm not bendy enough. I was taking longer to get up after every goal. <laughs> He was crushing water so much right away. Yeah. And then he actually, like, before the like first period, he, like, collapsed. He fell down. He like, <laughs> started oh, yelling, no. yeah, oh, help. Oh, well, the gear is so heavy, too. Yes, I'd forgotten he, that. Yeah, man. Even the blocker alone, he's like, can he lift his arms? I think, honestly, I think on skates, well, the puck's harder. But on skates might be a little easier because you're trying to slide and do the splits yeah. on a gym floor. Oh, no. I couldn't do that in grade five. And, and that's the thing. When you're running around on that, that's when you get hurt so easily. You're like, not kidding. Just moving a bit and you like break your fucking ankle. <laughs> well, you can imagine these guys are up there for six months and it's 24-hour darkness. Imagine what the Tuesday night ball hockey game means. No, man. Just Something hardcore. Something to forward to all week. Right? Yeah. Was it aggressive or just like like at, just running fast and everyone? Well, the nice thing was there were I would say all skill levels, but the skill guys were off the hook. Yeah. Doing twisties and picking up the ball and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like doing that uh, put it on the blade of your stick and flip it over a guy like that stuff. Buttering dudes ankles and taking buds out. And the nice thing is <clears> when I was leaving the commanding officer gave me a medal. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, when you come up here, it doesn't matter for how long, you're a member of our family, so uh, congratulations on being part of the Frozen Chosen. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was quite an honor, man, and it was very um, it was very moving, and I was, I was happy to do it. They do so much for us, you know? Beautiful. And, best part, I got a toque that says, alert, alert, for Anna. Yeah, that's the best. She's going to love uh, that. Uh, let's take a break on TNT 112, and we'll be right back with all these new games, bots. Where's my beer chair? Hey! Welcome back. Shoot up. Welcome back. Welcome back. Shoot up. <laughs> We're going to play. We had a number of names for this game. One was Kijiji Connections, and Connections was with a K. Yeah. Another was, uh, what did you call it? On Kijiji's or something? Uh, me- uh, meeting on the Kijiji's. Meeting on the Kijiji's, also a good name. <laughs> yeah. But we landed on. Is listen. it listen or look? Listen. Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. So these are Kijiji interactions <laughs> where one of us will be showing up at the other guy's house because they saw an ad on Kijiji. It's up to the guy coming to look to say what it is they're here to see. Yeah. And somebody will be trying to pull a fast one on somebody else. <laughs> we can change up who it is every time. Yeah, it, it, and sometimes it's not a fast one. It's the other person that's pulling the fast one. Yeah. And someone has to say, not unlike Get a Job, which is surprisingly popular. Yeah. Someone has to say, look, I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah, are you coming to see me or vice versa? Um, Do you like when people say vice versa? I don't know. God, vice versa is fine with me. Yeah, vice what versa is more fun that to say. was with Fred Savage. What was right? that? That vice versa movie. Was it Fred Savage and 
Judge Reinhold? No. It was like the bad competition to big, like the failed attempt to combat the big popularity. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Vice versa. (laughs) Anyway, I'll be I'll be the person you coming to me. Okay. I'll be an old woman. You're an old woman? Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, you ready? (laughs) Yes. Hi, are you uh, Mrs. Peterson? Yes, I am. Hi, my name's Derek. I I responded to your ad on Kijiji. Hello, Derek. I'm, I guess I'm, I'm here to see the car? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'd, uh, take a look here. It's there it is. Under the sheet here? Yeah, just pull it up. Okay. Go ahead. Wow. It is, um, it is, it's a beaut. It's like a 66 Chev? I don't know. It's something, something like that. I just don't want it here anymore. You... You had? Did you place the ad yourself on Kijiji? Yeah, yeah. Because this had, was uh, um, this was Arthur's uh, bread and butter, but uh, he's not here anymore, and uh, I don't like it, so I don't want it anymore. And you're selling this for two hundred and seventy-five dollars? Is that too much? <laughs> um, no. I mean, if if okay, hundred dollars? Huh? Hundred dollars? Just get it out of here. I. I feel badly. I, I feel like um, I feel like okay, you should fifty dollars. All right, my last offer. I'll give you fifty dollars. So you'll give me money to take this car away? Yeah. I I have to say I don't feel great about this arrangement. Okay, listen. A hundred dollars. I'll give you a hundred dollars. I. I feel like I'm the one who's benefiting from this transaction, and that doesn't that doesn't sit right. With what do you me. want from me? Take it, just. I don't want the car here. If you don't, if I, if you don't want it for that money, I don't have any more money. I don't. I, I don't want your money. I, if anything, I feel like I should help you sell it for what it's worth. So then, so then you get the the money that <coughs> that you deserve to have. <laughs> What's with the, that guy being such a nice guy? Like, it felt wrong to grease her over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then I kept waiting for you to say, listen, I wasn't born yesterday. Oh, shit. <laughs> I fucking totally forgot. Pissed yourself, bot. Oh, damn it. All right. So that was a train wreck. Let's start with the next one. Okay. I'm coming to you? Yes. All right. <laughs> no wonder it was going on. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was trying to figure out how I could say it. <laughs> well, because she could have easily said it. Like, I, <laughs> even in the other way, her being like sympathetic to getting rid of it. Right. <laughs> All right, we'll nail it this time. Yeah, You're we'll get to see it this me. time. I'm coming to see you. <clears throat> yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, this the uh, this the place is uh, the Kijiji at? Yep, yep, that was me, yep. Can I have a look at it? Yep. Yeah, it's right here in uh, in the guest bedroom under the bed here. Have a look, yeah. Ooh. All right, let's do it. Had a bunch of people come to look at it already. So you, say, you say it's uh, you say it's game used, eh? Yep. Game One guy used? went to the bank machine. He's on his way back, he said. But I said, I can't what? hold it for you. I said, if someone comes here to buy it, it's gone. How am I supposed to know this is Tretiak stick? Well, you see right there the black mark on the on the tip of the blade there. Yeah. If you watch um, Canada Russia that uh, uh, TV series. Yeah. You'll see right when the the puck hit that. Uh... Now to be clear, it's, it's game used in the game reenactment in the mini series of the Canada Russia series. I don't know. I, it's... How am I supposed to know about this? Well, it is game used. It's just not maybe the game you were thinking of. I give you a... Listen, I wasn't born yesterday, okay? Okay. I, I give you 50 bucks for it. Well, no, it's on there for 275 So bucks. I said, look, I said the lowest I can go is uh, is 270 I have $5 wiggle room either way. You can give me 280 you can give me 270 And yeah, I don't know. What if this ain't Tretiak stick? I ain't paying that much money for a stupid goalie stick. 
Well, it's not Vladislav Tretiak's stick. It's it's Donnie Tretiak's stick. Oh, really? Yeah, that was. And his you're nephew. trying to sell it for two hundred seventy-five bucks, are you? Yeah, well, you go to Cleves. And I'm out of here. Goalie stick cost there. Bye. That guy was like Mackie who came to look at my fifth wheel. He was out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Tretiak's goalie stick. Game used. Gamer from seventy-two. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hello? Okay. Hi. I'm here about your uh, storage unit that you have on Kijiji for $40. Yep. Yeah. Uh, d- is it really Ikea? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Do you uh, still have the Allen key that you put it together with? Uh, <clears throat> no, you have to get one of those on your own. It's, uh, and this this one's pretty good, too. Look at the, the look how solid it is. It does seem like the back is is coming off it a little bit, and the drawer doesn't no. close all the way, huh? No, no. Look, <clears throat> it's carried a lot of expensive items, and now it's, it's a lot of history in it. Well, what what you put in it really has no bearing on on the um, cabinet, like for for my purposes. I I guess I just want one with a back and one with a drawer that that shuts. It's two hundred dollars, and that's the last offer. I I mean, I could maybe give you twenty bucks. For it just to get 20 it off bucks. your hands. Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> I'm not paying for this. You're not paying any less than $175. I feel like it's on there for 40 It's on the Kijiji for $40. Yeah, that's it. Get away with you. Okay, thanks for your time. Hello? Yes, this is a... Uh... Is this the Kijiji ad? Yes, you're you're here to see my uh, vintage lawnmower, the push mower. Yep. Yeah. I'll can tell I see you, it? Uh, why don't I tell you what I know about it, and then you can tell me what you know about them, and we'll kind of compare notes on what we both know about them. It's a cordless. Well, yeah, it's it's an old timey push mower, and it belonged to my great great grandfather. I'll be honest. When we moved my grandfather uh, into a home. I found it in his basement. So you can imagine if it was in his basement that it's uh, not exactly new. <laughs> Why are the wheels all squishy? Well, I guess because I wanted to maintain the the antique feel of it. I looked at, at upgrading it, but I thought part of its charm is that it still works. You try it out. The wheels are all like sponge and they're all... It's like... It's not even rubber. What is... So well, a bit of WD-40 to take the edge right <laughs> off that. I didn't want to put WD-40 on it in case it was going to go in a museum or not something. Not even wheels. Like These are just like Brillo pads taped. It's not even wheels. Well, I guess back in those days they... No, they, no, this is... Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. I know what a wheel looks like, and it ain't this. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming in hot with the wasn't born yesterday's now. <laughs> And fake wheels. Oh, okay. I want to try to get one in. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, I beat you to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get one in though. Here I come. Okay. Hello. You got some jam jars for sale? Yes, I do. Come, come on in. Well, before I take step one foot in your property, Whoop. tell me, is, are they mason jars, poisonous jam jars, or are they actual jam jars? They're completely uh, normal jam jars. Three pieces where you put the top on, then you screw the lid over the top, and they're clear glass. Or are they two pieces with a with a twist top? Yeah, uh, they're uh, they're really uh, they're 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 glass. Yeah. They're... What about the lid? It's the, the lid. The... Is it a two piece lid, or you got a one piece lid? Uh, yeah, two pieces, but one really. How many ounces of jam can you keep in, in these here jars? Because I couldn't tell from the picture. I don't know. Take a look at them and not make me an offer. Why don't I wait here and you bring them to the door? Because you never know what kind of perv or sicko right, is going to open the door right with the Gigi's. They're right behind the door here. Hang on. I'm going to tell you something. My uncle's sitting in the car there watching. He's got a 22. He's not afraid to use it. So if you try look, any funny look. stuff, grab Take it from my horn or anything. Look behind you. You'll find look, yourself that's... face down on the carpet and we'll see what day it Sir? is. Sir... Look down there. That's the jars. Look down there. That's the perv's opening statement every time. Why don't we stick to jam and jars? No, look. Right there. Uh, right by your feet. There's three jars. 
Three. That's them. Look, pick the them Gigi up. Gigi said there was four. No, I said one. A guy came and bought one already. You sold one friggin' jam jar. Everybody knows jam jars come in three pieces and four packs. He, I sold it to him for a hundred dollars. Give me one goddamn reason I shouldn't give my uncle the high sign in the passenger seat and have him put a bullet right through your temple right now and me driving all the way out here for jam jars. What's your offer, sir? Well, you know what my offer is? See my fist right here? I'd like to give it to you free of charge right in the mouth for wasting my time. Are you trying to uh, threaten to assault, assault me, sir? I'm not threatening to anything, but I'm taking these jam jars with me and you'll be happy that I did. No, 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 you're not! Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. I didn't drive all the way, way out here to see three jam jars. You're not! You're not! You let go of you me won't. and I'll let go of you. You won't! You let go of me first. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> How come you didn't say I wasn't born yesterday? I did! You did? Yeah, I said it. I just floated it. It felt great. The You know, some of these Kijiji transactions must escalate. <laughs> Big fight in the front foyer well, I know of for, house. from Mackie coming to see me. <laughs> throws him into the closet. <laughs> I was furious when he insulted my stuff on my property. I suspect on reflection that he was furious for driving all the way down here, feeling like I had falsely billed <laughs> what, what I was selling. I'm about to go on a Kijiji binge, and I'm selling a whole bunch of stuff. And I pray to Kijizas that it goes smoothly because... Like, what am I supposed to do? I have two pine drop leaf tables. They're too nice to just <laughs> what are you give away. About? You what? Serious? Yeah. What? They're too nice to give away. Then you throw them on there. Throw them on Kijiji. I know, but then I—it's a parade of idiots showing up at my house. Yeah. And then if a few well, idiots come and try to knock you down on the price. Remember that asshole that came on the RV? Yeah, Mackie. Chirping it. Mackie was the worst. Yeah. He'd say, like, saying things like, oh, this carpet's gross. Did, did you say he was coming down the drive really slow? Yeah, because he doesn't normally take the LeSabre off-road. So he was going, like, 5K yeah. down the... Return of the Mac. But this is the thing. If somebody comes and buys your table for 250 bucks, <laughs> that was good. If 250 people come and try to knock you down, then what you're paying yourself per hour to sell things on Kijiji is suddenly very little, right? Yeah. Well, at least it does Kijiji like once a month maybe, and it's usually pretty good. Paid big dividends? Yeah. Um, well, I have a friend, and this is her move. The price goes up $100 every offer you make me below what I'm asking. Ah. Like, I'm asking what's fair, but don't be that guy. Which I kind of like, too. I like playing Kijiji Hardball. So, we, I guess, uh, since it's summertime, my kids run into the backyard last Monday, and they see the new spring-free trampoline. Breaking news in the Taggart household. Yes. Walk me and the people through what spring free means it means there's no springs like the How? kind that where you, you you know get your leg stuck in and it cuts the side of your leg with the pinches and the stretches remember those days in the old days where you missed the, the side and you fall down into the springs and it's horrible yeah and then they had the but i don't understand how they make one without <clears throat> springs yeah this this guy came up with this design where it's a really tight, you know, uh, net, you know, basically a the uh, the hell it is the floor the the actual thing the, the it's like so tight and then it's based on the circular steel frame but there's these like I guess they're plastic tubes that are kind of like on an angle but around so there's like they have an element of spring to them okay. So it's hard to explain, but it's just uh, the mat itself is like really tight, but it's uh, the the actual spring happens from these plastic things underneath that like are one huge spring as opposed to springs around it. 
Is this but something that the kids were clamoring for? The, you, it rips, man. Huh? Is this something that the kids had been beating you guys up for? Yes, for like three years. Yeah. And it's like the one kid has it in the neighborhood, so everyone's there all the time, right? And, so has uh, your neighborhood kid traffic gone <clears throat> through the roof? No, not yet. But it's it's uh, they've been on it every every day since, like before and after, like not before, but after school and into the night. Oh, and it's like the most ridiculous exercise you can have because it's apparently what that's what astronauts go to to get back when their legs are like atrophied from being in space or whatever no happens way. to the human body they go to the trampoline to to uh get everything back because everything in your body is working but it's not that impact the impact isn't that strong it's kind of like swimming in that sense where you're not really hitting anything or you're just kind of moving but you're actually your heart rate is really run as if you were running but there's no impact really happening to your body so, so it's, it's good for gut watch too it's definitely it's amazing yeah it's it's uh, well lisa's on the jacob's ladder like 45 minutes straight which is insane but a half an hour jumping and she's just as as worn out afterwards so come on it, yeah. Does it have the surround, like <clears throat> where uh, if you go up against the edge, you're not going to fall onto the grass? Yeah, and the design is when you fall at the side, even if it's up high, the whole thing kind of collects you and brings you down as opposed to falling against it and flat. You know what I mean? It, you just kind of lean down and then it brings you back. No matter, and it, it, it can take, uh, like, I think it's maximum 220 pounds. Wow. Yeah. So the kids love it and Lisa loves it. Do you love it? Yeah. No, I love it too. So it's did you have to move. put it together? They come and do it. These two great kids came and set it up in like a half an hour. Can the kids be in the trampoline at the same time or it's kind of a one at a time deal? Well, it's a bigger one. It's 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 not the jumbo square, but it's the large square. So there's four like bouncing surfaces. But if they're all in there, they uh, you know, we tell them to be completely separated and, and no flips or anything like that. But it's it's better to have two or one. But there's enough room for two to, to be really far apart. Like there's no chance of them hitting. And that's so the worry, in, is... in your research and experience, when kids break limbs in trampolines and stuff, is it most often from smacking like, your leg going other. through where the springs are or landing awkwardly? Yeah, smacking into each other. Right. Or in the olden days, it was like you fell off it. Right. Or, you, you know, you got caught in the springs. And when you get caught in the springs, you could have really bad things happen. Yeah, especially if she tipped over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Springless trampoline. Go fig, Newton. Yeah, it's exciting times. It's going to be a bouncy summer in Taggartville. <laughs> Let's take a break on uh, TNT 112. We'll be right back, bot. Let me ask you this right quick. You know what I mean? Let's play chirps. Let's play chirps. You ready? <laughs> um, so we're going to pick two people, and it's going to escalate into an argument. Yeah. Okay. Who? So <clears throat> how about we do uh our two favorites were or the situation of donovan in the booth okay with uh, and i'll be meatloaf right love donovan and meatloaf <laughs> so are you singing i will do anything for love sure yeah what other songs does meatloaf have paralyzed by the dashboard lights was him right yeah and what else how can we do that just for the end of time that one <laughs> Want to do that one? Sure. Yeah, it's a jam. Okay. Let okay. Me sleep on him. Yeah, he's doing that part. Okay, good. Oh, you love me forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You ready? All right, meatloaf. Yes. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. What do I call you, meaty? Yeah, you can call me meat. Call meaty. me meat. Uh, yeah. We're about to record. Sure. Um, what? Why don't we just try one and see what happens organically? Okay. And then we can go back and uh, re-record. Okay. So we're recording, love. Anytime you feel the inspiration strike. <clears throat> oh, will you love me forever? 
Will you love me? Will you love me forever? Will you love me? Not a chance. <coughs> um, so there's one take. Uh, great. Um, our mistake, we weren't recording. Let's try it again. And uh, maybe find a way to sound lovable when you're saying, will you love me? Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah, try it again. Let me sleep on it. Baby, baby, let me sleep on it. Let me sleep on it. I'll be an answer in the morning. <sighs> so to be clear, is the let me sleep on it, is that the people listening to the song because it's so boring? Hey, you know this is a number one song. You know it's going to be great. What are you talking about, Donovan? I could have sworn it was more number two. <sighs> Is that uh, that's how you're gonna be, eh? Low blows, eh? Well, I find it like eh? a bit like a salad bar, yeah. It has all these different ingredients that don't necessarily belong in the same bowl. Oh, really? You ain't got any lips. You well, got liver lips, nothing. Maybe that's a slits. weird analogy because you probably ne- never met a bowl you couldn't finish. Hey, how uh, piss hole are your eyes right now? You gotta wear those thick shades. I don't understand why somebody who looks like they fell into a vat of pubes is insulting my eyes. Yeah, uh, how many uh, selections of leathers do you have in your actual bedroom? Crystal Gale's before shot. Why is it that tempers are escalating? All I was doing is saying we should record a song that people would listen to. Hey. You and that Maserati earlier with a clown? Did I see you with a clown in the back seat? Uh, that's my wife. Oh, sorry about that. Why meatloaf? Because you're overdone? Or because it's what you smell like? Uh, no, Donny. It's because I'm thick and juicy and the ladies love me. And I'm basically... A little slice of everything in American history, can you throw it all together, you get a little bit of meatloaf. And that's me. That's why people love me. That's why I've had so many hits. And maybe that's why I should go back to Todd Rundgren. Well, I thought maybe meatloaf, because people could never finish it, and you deserve to be wrapped up and put in the fridge. Because you're done. Your time is done. <laughs> <laughs> So I love how it didn't become like <laughs> so harsh. yelling, but if you read a transcript of it, you'd be like, oh man, <laughs> those, are... those guys did not get along. <coughs> Big chirps. 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 Okay. How about, uh, what, uh, Joe and Gino? Sure. You sure of them? They haven't worked it up. Well, they, I mean, there's a good chance that they would uh, be chirping each other anyway. Yeah, exactly. What are they doing, though? What if we do Joe and Gino as kids, like under 10? Oh, okay. And they're, how about their... Uh, like the Vanelli kids. There's yeah, they're putting, animated they're putting, show. They're putting all the tomatoes in the in the mason jars for mom. Yeah. Okay, they got yeah. them working. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. Give me a pass, pass, me, the, pass me the right one there. Pass. Hey, Joe, it's yeah. not like a Hot Wheels car. You can't just squish it around and throw it and drop it on the floor. You gotta I'm be gentle with it. I'm not gonna drop it. Come on, get out of here. You've been pushed push it away from the salami in my head. Put it Give in me the, the other one. Just, you don't have it. to break it. It's not just, like your hopes and dreams just to set it in there gently. Just put, okay, look. Give me another mason jar. I'm done that one. Tomato head. Yeah. Why you got to break the mama's tomatoes? <coughs> She's saving them for a reason. They need to be pristine. Hey, Gino, why is your hair got to be so big? It's up in, it's in, like, it's in my face. You're sitting beside me and your hair's like in my face. How do you think I got the nickname Gino Fronelli? Ha, <laughs> funny stuff, Gino. You're hilarious. Give me another mason Joe, jar. Joe, you're funny too. Looking, funny looking. <laughs> hey, at least I got the face. You got the hair though, right? People Joe, what are you I... talking about? Your face looks like someone spilled copier fluid on it. It does not. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Every time I see your face, I get large. I think about, like, uh, I got to think about a good-looking girl to get rid of the, the stomach ache. Every time I see your face, I have to ask myself, why is there a crack down the center of it? And then I realize it's not your face, it's your ass. And you know what? It actually looks better. You just mad at me because I know how to play better piano than you do. 
You don't even know how to play. Uh, you, you don't even know how to play skin and rinky dink. Joe, speaking of skin and rinky dink, how's uh, how's Gloria liking you these hey, days? Hey Joe, check out the skin on my wrinkled pinky dink. Yeah, exactly there. Hey, you want to go? Uh, you want to go upstairs? I gotta show you something. Come on up here. I'm look. Not, uh, no, I'm not no, falling look, for look. this. In this, look at this. I got this for you. I'm not falling for this. You're going to do that thing where you roll yeah, up on. your middle finger like it's some kind of tiny <laughs> uh, gramophone or some shit. Hey, hey, Joe, look. Hey, fuck you, Joe. Hey, Gino, fuck you, Gino. Are you saying that in the mirror, Joe? I know, I made a mistake. Oh, you got confused there for fuck. a minute. That's new. How fuck how you. out of character. Yeah, well. Hey, let's just sit here on this plastic couch for a minute and then let me tell you something. You know, Dad was telling me the other day that he's sick and tired of you and, and uh, he wants you to, like, maybe go to military school or something. Mom was telling you, me the other day, that she wishes you were never born. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> She was. That's what she told me. <laughs> what, what are you going to talk to me? <sighs> Do you know what mom calls you? <sighs> Do you know what she calls you? Joe away. Because she wishes you would just Joe away. Oh, you fainted because you're mad. You do this to me every time, Gino. I can't stand you, you know. I love that for Joe and Gino as kids. All we did was make our voices a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> what unbelievable character work. Uh, this is Gino as a kid. This is Gino as a kid. This is uh, Gino as a kid. Let's do, uh, do you want to do Bonnie and Wolfman Jat? <laughs> yeah, oh, what, like uh, getting banged up and then just chirping each other all of a sudden? Yeah, oh, like no. maybe they rented a cottage, but it was too soon, so they're oh. kind of sick of each other. And well, it's only she, day yeah, three. She, she... <laughs> yeah, I might pour myself a small one, yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hey, how are you? <laughs> um, fine, I thought you might take longer to go for a swim. You've only been gone about five minutes, yeah. Oh, I swear, I'm hot. I was just working so hard out there. Maybe you should go for a drive by yourself in the car and turn on the air conditioning. What? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it's not supposed to mean anything. I think it's pretty clear. There were no lines to read between. Yeah. Were well, you trying to, trying to say something to me there? Hey? You know what? This light is uh, it's not helping you right now, Bonnie. This light's not helping you at all. I don't Your think face. you need to uh, try to punch me in the feelings, Jet. I was just, you know, suggesting that you seem a bit worked up and maybe it's time for the heat. What? Eat? You, you're calling me fat now, are you? Fat? Why, why don't you take off your velour dining jacket and uh, see if that helps you cool down? Oh, now the hairy jokes? This is, this is too much for me right now. Hey. Your breath smells like Cigarettes and mints. And it drives me nuts. Oh, tell me something I don't know. And you you know what, Bonnie? You drink too much, Bonnie. You're drunk every night. I drink to forget the moment that I agreed to rent a cottage with you, yeah. And the floors that you put in here? They're all a mess. Well, I had to get something that was anti-slip so you wouldn't fall tiptoeing across the floor with those high-heeled clogs on. Let me tell you something about these trinkets you're collecting. Nobody likes them. Who gives a shit about these stupid little chickens? Let me tell you something about your goatee. 1999 called and uh, wanted it back, you yeah. Oh, yeah? Your mother must be so proud. Hey, by the way, is she still living in that gingerbread house there in the dark forest? Your um, barbed wire tattoo is so dated, it's almost retro cool, you yeah. know. Hey, uh, Elton John called. Uh, he wants his crybaby bullshit back. You know, <laughs> they're hiring um, the uh, uh, rum pirate uh, in town for the summer. Maybe you could play his grandfather. Hey, Bonnie, nice hair, dude. Did you did you do your hair with firecrackers this morning? Your uh, feet should have a party and invite your pants down. You know, you're a, why are you, you expecting a flood? Your eyes are so blue. 
like relic. Your face reminds me. This is getting so mean. Ah. Uh, your face reminds me of a catcher's mitt. After be- it's been broken in. You're you know. beating me to death with that karate breath. Karate breath? <laughs> yeah, it's kicking the shit out of me, Bonnie. I feel like they um, they might have been more of a one-night stand than a relationship. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because he's, he's like a gigolo. And she's like a loner. You know what we've never done? What? Is Andrea being mean, if someone was really mean to her. I don't know if it's possible, is it? It would probably happen if someone was... Like pushed her? Or pushed Laramie. Oh, somebody started on Laramie. I could see her being really... <laughs> Turned into a lioness. Yep. To protect him. <laughs> Big leap and like just knock someone out. And Laramie's like, Andrea, really, I don't care. Really, you don't have to. And she, no, yeah. that's not right. You don't have to hit him, hit him with the Wonder Woman cross arm blows. Yeah. <laughs> it's not right, Laramie. I've seen what he said. <laughs> She's on a subway and someone ch- chirps him and she throws him down into the, into the subway. Gives him, like, headlock and noogies. Because that's oh, all she throws, really knows. Throws him into the tracks. Oh, mad. Oh, my gosh. She actually <laughs> kills someone? No, no. There's no train there. He has to crawl back up? Yeah. How hot <laughs> is the subway in the city of Toronto in the summer? It's, it can be pretty pretty greasy if there's no air conditioning. Like when like you, you went get... downtown on Sunday, how did you get there? Subway, always. That's well, your move generally. to get downtown, right? Yeah, that's my move. Do you want to pay for parking? Yeah, Don Mills. Park at Don Mills, take the subway. Dope. That's the move. Just to avoid the traffic madness. Um, I like taking the subway because I certainly don't have the opportunity to take it here in Nova Scotia. So it's kind of a novelty and kind of fun. Especially when you're going to the airport and you got that weirdo. Well, yeah, and I'm always uh, surprised at how young kids are that are on the subway by themselves. But I guess if city kids were on my road overnight, they'd probably be freaked out that the foxes would get them. Yeah, how how uh, old do you think your kids will be before you let them? If your school was around the corner from you, like see, how this minor. is a good game. Yeah, <clears throat> let's play. How old? Yeah, how old? How old would your kids have to be to walk to school by themselves? <clears throat> well, John's getting there, right? He's he's eleven. Yeah, I was so going to say twelve. I think twelve will be fine. Sometimes he's starting to do it now. Like he'll run home as soon as the bell goes. So as I'm on my way to pick up Annalise, he's running home already. So it's like it's so close that I can see him get to the house. So how old would he have to be to babysit? Uh, I would say a couple more years, just because you know leaving them in the house and I'm going to say Jack's, twelve Jack's, to Jack's cover nine. off like a Sobeys run. Yeah. But probably 14, like, if Mother and I were going out to get on the liquor. Mm-hmm. More because Annalise is a little younger, you know what I mean? To have right. three of them alone. <clears throat> yeah, right. If something happened, he couldn't yeah. exactly get her to a hospital. No, yeah. So for a few more years for that. So even to Annalise to be older, too. But How uh, old for sleepovers? I'm not a big sleepovers guy. Lisa, Lisa's kind of converted me to the why do they have them and what's the point of sleepovers yep like why what's the point of going other than like spending more time if you want to spend time then go there and come home at nine o'clock you know instead of going and sleeping at the house all the time so she's pro sleepover huh she's she's pro sleepover she's for it no, she's against it. Oh, she's against it. You Lisa, were for it. No, I'm against it too. I'm saying, what's the point of sleeping at someone else's house? Ah, uh, why not just hang out there and come home? Well, I know when I was a kid, I loved staying over at my friend Mark Hallett's house, just because yeah. it was kind of a novelty to wake up first thing in the morning and go Start take party. shots or 
uh, chuck the ball around or something. Plus, they had better snacks than us. We didn't have sugar cereal. They did. They got yeah. to have a lunch, and it was usually like half moons or caramels or something. Yep, and I did the same with Alex O'Reilly back in the day where he spent a week at his house. But that's, uh, I was older. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe 13, 14, I guess. But it's just... I also think the, uh, they were allowed just... to stay up later. They were allowed to watch shows that we weren't. So there, there was a lot of uh, reason why it was cool to stay overnight. That's when you get into trouble, too, when you're staying overnight. That's when I got the uh, wrestling on the garbage bag and cut my arm open. No kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> what, how old for uh, your kid to have their own phone or iPad? I think 14. I would Just love so they if don't you get make it to addicted 14. addicted to their phone yet because yeah. it seems to happen no matter what. Do most kids Jack's age <clears throat> seem to have their own phones? Yeah, every all the kids John's class, Jack's class, they have phones. They like at they're coming out of school and they're all on their phones already. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So it sucks that uh, it's accepted everywhere else younger, but doesn't mean they're they're gonna get it or or we're gonna cave do you know this was um this was maybe the neatest thing about going to alert they don't have the internet wow so all these young guys and gals in their early 20s the commanding officer was telling me like there's a couple of days of digital detox but then in the lunch hall he was like look around everyone's having lively conversation no one's like just a sec let me look that up People are like, I don't know. I don't think that's right. I beg to differ. Having conversations, talking stuff out. And the din of like kind of happy, excited chatter was so cool. And he said, for the most part, there's the first couple of days are kind of weird when they're reaching for their phones and stuff before they kind of settle into it. But for the most part, most of them love it. What do you mean? Are you back? You're back. Um, most of the kids, even though it was a little hard at first, most of the kids loved the fact that they didn't have their phones for six months while they were up there. No FaceTime, no Facebook. They have the internet, so they can email their loved ones and stuff, and they have kind of a video conferencing thing, and you can pick up any of the kind of public phones and, and use it to call your family. But how yeah. nice to not have your phone in your pocket all the time. Yeah, no, I hear you. They must be, like, walking back to, like, 1995 or something, right? Hey, Jeremy. Yeah? I got a cell phone. Oh, you do, do you? Yeah, it's a flip phone, and I can't take pictures or send emojis, but I can text you. Can I have your number? Um. Here, here's my phone. You text yourself from my phone, and then I'll have your coordinates. Okay, but you can't text me more than once a day. Okay, Jeremy. Like, just what if I have an emergency gear question? Well, yeah, you got to save that for, like, your that's your text. Even in the middle of the night? Yeah, especially in the middle of the night. Okay. All right, Micah? Okay, Jeremy. Bye, Micah. Talk to you next week, bud. Bye, bud.